Hello, friends. I'm sure glad to come into your presence again this afternoon. I'm glad that you was awaiting for the gospel crusade to assemble, that we could have fellowship around the Word of God this afternoon, that we once again could enjoy His presence as we pray with one another, even though there may be distances in between us and the next neighbor. Yes, it's not like sitting in the pew right next to the side of each other. That part may be true. Maybe some of you do in your own living room. But praise God that we can assemble even though that we may be stretched out over a hundred miles. And we can pray for one another because our spirit will be humbled in a word of prayer. Yes, we'll be praying the prayer of faith and singing the songs of Zion. Because God is wonderful. God is still on the main line. And I know that in the person of his son, he is still making propitiations for him. Yes, he's a great high priest. He's also my Savior yet today. And will be a soon coming king. We just love this God of ours. And I say ours because I found out, as I told you last Sabbath, that I was over at Brother Bettis' uh, where he's a pastor over at Gospel Mission in Campsville and found out that we don't have God cornered here on the Gospel Crusade nor up in Walkerville either because God is a merciful God. He's a great God. He's a God so little that he can fit into my heart. He can fit into your heart and fit into the hearts of those that we're praying for him. And yet he's so big that he can cover the whole universe, the whole atmosphere, the stratosphere, the heavens. Praise God. I'm a servant, that kind of a God. A God that may be an almighty God, but he's still a God of love. That there's no limit to the love that God has for us. Because whenever a person will lay down his life for someone else, that's something. It would be hard for me to lay down my life for one of my children to see him, to see that they were going to get in the way of an accident, and I'd jump in and get maybe get killed myself. That'd be hard to do. But I love them that I might even do that. But just stop and think what Jesus done. Even though I didn't love him at that time, he loved me enough that he died for me. Oh, I'm glad that I'm a servant, that kind of a God. How about you? Are you serving that kind of a God today? It's wonderful to know that you have the privilege. It's wonderful to know that you took advantage of that privilege and you said, yes, Jesus, I'm a coming over on your side. Yes, Jesus, I want you to forgive me my sins. Yes, Jesus, I want you, Justin, to share your love with me and cause me to share my love with you and with those around me. That's the God that we're serving, praising his holy name. We'll be looking in a few minutes at the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Just in a few minutes, the 55th chapter of Isaiah, if you want to be a looking at it. We'll also... Look at a reading in Ezekiel 47, 12 a sh for a short space of time if you want to be a turn in there also. <clears throat> but we will be looking expressly, ex expressly at the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Praise in the name of the Lord. But I'd like to, if with your permission, just to join in as Doanna is a plan on the on the piano, I think it's without him, I couldn't do nothing.
him I couldn't do a thing. I couldn't do nothing. That's my Lord. He jumps in and he helped me. He, Jesus, came in and he helped me out. You know, many times when the devil sees that you're going to get out, he'll jump in and help you out. There's once upon a time, I bring an example of that, that I went to the hospital and there wasn't any place to park, so I parked over on the other side of the road. And a gentleman, I'll say a gentleman, he was perturbed to think that I parked over on his side. And he jammed his car up against mine, so I'd have to hit him to get out. Well, instead of that, I jacked it up on the front and then slid it over. And by so doing, I would be able to get out. And when he saw it, then here he come out, and he is a raven. He said, oh, wait a minute, and I'll help you. And so he moved his car then. Yeah, it's the devil. Now, I'm not a saying that the, he was in the devil. I'm not going to say that. But what I'm a saying this, that is just one case of flesh, of man. But the devil, when he sees that he thought that he had you hemmed in, and he failed to do it, and he sees you're going to get out, you're going to figure a way out, then he'll jump in and help you out. Oh, yeah, but I'm thankful that I'm a servant of God that'll help you out whether you're in the wrong. He'll even try to lead you out if you'll just give him a chance. Can you say amen? Can you tell that one that you're praying for that Jesus will help you out? I'm going to turn now to the 55th chapter of Isaiah. And I think that it is just a scripture that's full of gold. Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the water. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people a leader, and a commander of the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. All oh, glory. We're still a thanking those who pray for us from week to week and those who answer the needs financially also without being asked. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you, even though I didn't ask for your finances, I still appreciate them very much. Thank you, the Lord. Thanking the Lord. I want to, to join another song just in a minute with Doanna. If you just give me a chance, Thank the Lord. It's in progress already.
of my God. That's how I got my spiritual sight was that amazing grace. Oh, glory. He didn't hang me over the grapes of hell. He didn't do that. Praise the Lord. He helped me. My God, he helped me. My God, he helped me. Oh, praise the Lord, my God and his son. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it makes us think, don't it, what Jesus has done. Let's look at that first verse of the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Praise God. That sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Well, to many it is a fairy tale, but to me it's the truth. Oh, yes, you know, when I say the truth, that's what Pilate asked Jesus when he was so confounded, when he was so badly mixed up. He looked at Jesus and says, What is the truth? And before Jesus got a chance to answer him, Pilate turned around and went out to talk to the multitude. He had turned his back on the truth. He asked the question, but didn't wait to get the answer, for the truth was standing there in front of him. Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. Yeah, and I'm glad that we can have him in our heart today. Praise the Lord. Yes, I know that that sounds like a fairy tale. Come ye and eat without money. Oh, you, I know that there's some of you, the ones probably that I would like to be a preaching to, probably don't have a radio. They may not have one. I don't know. I'm a talking about those uh, that are on the poverty level. That, and the poverty level has raised quite a, considerably since that I quit, since I uh, uh, retired ten years ago. And uh, I know that my son told me out there in California that the poverty level is around fourteen or 15,000 a year, that it takes that much to make just a decent living. And I'm talking about those that don't make it, those that can't make it, those that are going hungry. Oh, I've watched it on TV, and one that I like to listen to very much, and that's Brother Jimmy Swigert. I like to listen to him in the morning about 7 o'clock on the TV because he does bring some good programs. And I watched him how he was feeding some of those underprivileged children in other countries that don't have the privileges that most of us do here and how he fed them. But that day in the great millennium, that is coming to an end. Oh, I'm so glad that it's coming to an end, that there won't be turned down for food stamps. When you know that you have a qualified case, uh, that you uh, maybe have had a back broken or something like that and not able to get around, uh, that you're still turned down for food stamps, that you can't maneuver, uh, that you can't go uh, because uh, you can't work, because you're in pain, you're in dire pain, and yet they say that they can't afford to, to feed you. Oh, yes, but that day is going to come to an end. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, because he said, Ho, oh, everyone that's hungry, come and eat without money. Now, uh, whenever you go out anywhere today, you don't go without money, do you? Because that is the bottom line, isn't it? Uh, that is the main line. That's the bold-faced print. How much money have you got? Uh, what can you spend? Uh, just what kind? If you want to go buy a, a car, just how much do you want to spend? Uh, yeah, and uh, say if you didn't have $50 on you, you'd be, uh, you ain't going to buy a junk, uh, one that's going down to the steel mill for junk. Uh, you wouldn't be able to buy one like that uh, because the the price of everything. Yes, they'll be, turn you down for food stamps uh, when it looks like that you ought to be able to go. But the Lord has given to Isaiah the right. Oh, he said, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the water, and he that hath no money. Oh, that is wonderful. Doesn't that sound wonderful to be able to go someplace and get something that you want without money? Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I've been a poor man, poor boy, and poor man, raised by poor family, and have the poor one myself. But I'm a thanking God that the day is a coming that I will be just as rich as the others. 
I think of the song that they said, uh, insured beyond the grave, that he might not have a cent, all of his money was spent, but he was still a millionaire. Oh, yes, he could call upon the name of the Lord and see things happen. If he had the money and had poor health, he would spend everything he had that he could have health. Or she would spend everything that she had that she could have health. And thank God that there is still healing in the name of the Lord. I know I use a, I have a blue cross card, blue shield card. I know that. And I believe in good doctors, and I believe in good hospitals. I still believe them. But I also know that the Lord Jesus Christ has jumped in and healed also. There won't be any more soup lines in that day. Oh, thank God. They won't have to have, because everybody will have his own. He will have uh, his own vittles to eat. Uh, he'll have his own fruit trees. Uh, he'll have whatever he needs. Uh, and uh, I think that the thistle won't be so prominent then uh, because he'll be able to cultivate the ground and to watch it grow. Uh, I think of Israel. Uh, I know uh, as I brought it out in uh, the church up at Walkerville uh, that and showed it on a map uh, uh, that Israel there someday would be a ruling that someday they would be covering a territory from the river Euphrates to the river of Egypt. And that has never been fulfilled yet. And I believe that that day that we'll see the, some prosperity, we'll see what we want to see at that time, love for one another. Glory be to God. Are you looking forward to that day? Yes, I know. I'm a talking about the great millennial day, that thousand years of peace that's a coming up that we talk about in Revelation, the 20th chapter, when Satan's bound for a thousand years. Uh, there won't be a standing in line for surplus food. Uh, I've seen it on TV, uh, how that uh, some have stood in line for three and four hours, and there are old people, too, that have to stand in line for that length of time uh, in order to get the food that they want. Uh, oh, the food that they not only want, but the food that they've got to have for us uh, sustenance, uh, to keep their body in up in some kind of a shape at all. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and when that rent uh, is coming due, or that payment is coming due on the home, uh, and they're out of a job, you know what I'm talking about, because uh, you don't have to you don't have to listen to me because you know what I'm talking about uh, uh, already. You don't have to get the information from me because you've already got it. But you know how it is when that payment is coming due and the unemployment checks are running out. What are you going to do after that? Oh, I'm glad. I'm a thinking about the new Jerusalem that's a coming down out of the sky uh, for those for, that have been blood-washed saints of the Lord. Uh, it'll be 1,500 miles square, and the center will be 1,500 miles high. Uh, oh, there could be a lot of people in that. Uh, uh, the saved of all ages that's been saved by the, Lord, uh, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There won't be any worry about surplus food or soup line or food stamps or the unemployment running out. There won't be any worry like that at that time because Jesus uh, will be on the throne. He will be in his son David, in his father David's place, if you want to say it that way. I don't care how you say but it'll be the son of David. That will be Jesus himself that will be taking charge of the government saying, oh, yes, he give us a little example. Uh, yes, you might say a little sample. I'll make it that way. Not example, but a little sample of what it could be. When he fed the multitudes here on the face of the earth, he fed them. He fed them two times. He fed a 5,000 and he fed a 4,000. And you know what? After he fed them, you think, well, now that's fairy tales too. You get something, uh, five fishes and two loaves, or five loaves and two fishes, and get them break it, broken up, and to feed five thousand. That's fairy tales. Oh, let me tell you, don't be, don't be disturbed about what you think. Don't, uh, don't be. If you are listening and you haven't been saved, don't be disturbed by that. Because I want to tell you, the apostles was right there, and they helped to carry it down to the multitude of the 5,000 that was sitting on the, the grass, uh, that Jesus had blessed uh, it and looked at the Father and asked him to bless it. Uh, 
praising the name of the Lord, and the apostles, they divided it. They give it out to those others. Uh, and you know what? They still worried about where their next meal was coming from. They worried, and they, they were still uh, looking at the, the natural side. The natural man don't understand all these spiritual benefits, does he? Yes, the apostles couldn't believe him. And uh, I'm not uh, blaming you if you can't blame, uh, believe him. But just get in there and ask the Lord to give you more faith if you can't understand it. Because he'll want you to come and eat. He'll want you to come and drink milk and honey without money. Praise the Lord. There's something else, too. I'm going to turn over right now to Ezekiel, the 47th chapter. And the 12th verse is where I'm going to turn to right now. And this is what it said. It's a long verse. And by the river upon the banks thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because their water they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Oh, isn't there a lot there to that? Uh, uh, down to chiropractor, down to Dr. Alexander's, uh, over, down to south end of town uh, uh, there. And uh, he uh, he is great. Uh, the treatment that I get uh, from the Word of God, it does me more good than what he does with his fingers on my back uh, because it gives me a spiritual lift uh, every time I go in there. Uh, and he's a questioning me, and then I'm a questioning him. And he asks me, he says, where does all these diseases come from i said they come from the fall of adam he says i believe it so yes and i just read about this tree that ezekiel was talking about and i wonder if that was one of the trees that was in the garden of eden that adam and eve were supposed to be a pruning supposed to be a trimming and supposed to be taken care of i just wonder if that was one of them and that as they went around maybe and not knowing why but pick a leaf off every once in a while and just be a chewing on it, to, just as a nervous gesture. And you know, I believe that it would be kind of a vitamin to them, a vitamin. Praise God, I'm think about the vitamins. Can you just imagine that? Peter tells about it, the vitamins over there are adding this to that and love to virtue and so on like that. But this is what vitamins too here. And you know, I believe that the body resistance to those germs was right there in the leaves that Adam and Eve had. When he fell, he fell a long ways. Adam and Eve both fell a long ways when they fell from the grace of God. And I, that, I believe that they had a tree there that, as I say, would be just for resistance. There would be no disease germs. The devil wouldn't be able to kick them out yet because they hadn't fallen. But after they fell, and the trees was uh, locked away from them, and they couldn't get in there anymore. I believe that they lost a lot of their privileges in the spirit, don't you? You know what I'm a thinking when they got that and that leaves for medicine. I'm a thinking one thing on those resistances that we take. Now we take vitamin C today for a re one of the resistances, and we take vitamin B uh, complex for a lot of other uh, ailments that we could have. But I like to think of one thing, that if we got that leaf uh, the, for the medicine that Ezekiel was talking about, and I sometimes believe that that tree was originally in the Garden of Eden, I think about it that it is better to keep well than it is to get well, not to be in all that pain and, and all that torment, but oh, just to let God know that we still love him, that we love him because he's the one that's making preparations for us that we can have that tree, that we can have eternal life without pain, without turmoil, that we can just spend eternity thanking Jesus, loving Jesus, and loving one another, that we know it wasn't our goodness that brought us in to the heaven. It wasn't our goodness that gave us eternal life, but it was Jesus himself who paid the price. And because he paid the price, he is everything to me. Hallelujah. Can you say that? He's everything to me. Father in heaven, we're thankful, God, that we can look forward to that day when we can run 
to where the milk and the honey is and the wine without money. Oh, that we can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Thank God, thank God that we can have it the way that he wanted us to have it in the first place. Lord, we're thankful for what you've done for us. Now, God, we ask you to give us courage and faith that we can pray for that lost soul. Lord, that lost soul and the one that was saved, God, that we can see his life filled with the Spirit. We can see sickly and weakly bodies healed in the sweet and the lovable name of Jesus and for his glory. Amen and amen. And until this time next Sabbath afternoon, this is Evangelist Gordon Williams returning you to your announcer.